All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So hi everybody, welcome to another week for Drawing 102. Hope you guys are excited as I am to get started here. So first and foremost, I know some of you have already messaged me about this, but just as a reminder, just make sure that you do upload your blind contour drawing um, on the projects channel in Artsonia. If you need the class code, I did include it right here. I also included what the blind contour uh, submission project button may look like to you. Um, you may also ask, because um, I know I have at least two images uploaded, that you may not be able to see it. And one of the reasons why you won't be able to see it is because your parent would have to give permission to allow uh, a public view of your artwork. So the only way that they're able to do that is if they log in um, into Art Sonia and connect their email to your account. So that is something that I would encourage you guys to do. You can do the same way you guys just signed in. Um, it's the exact same thing. Um, but otherwise, you know, it is going to be private. I'll be able to see it, but not everybody will be able to see it. So it's, it's really up to you. You do not have to do this if you do not want to. Okay. So we're going to be working on designing space. Um, and we're going to be talking about the project materials that you may need for this particular project. So uh, we're going to start off with our sketch paper, sketch pad, drawing paper, um, at least a 9 inch by 12 inch size if you can. If you have something small, that's okay. Um, but otherwise, something big or bigger is always better. Um, a pencil and eraser is what you will need. You will also need uh, either pen and ink, a marker, um, or several colored markers, um, watercolor pencil, watercolor, um, your hand as well as an object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a couple different materials here that I have so you guys can see a different sample. I'm actually grabbing them as I talk. So um, that way you can see at least like maybe some of the markers that I've used. Maybe you've seen them and you've never really played around with them. Um, but I did want to show you guys just a couple examples. Well, if I can grab my colored pencils and my watercolors. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get my camera to work. It's okay. I mean, remember, when I was talking about the blind contour, it's something that really you're not going to really know what it's going to look like until the very end. So it is going to look kind of funny and not look like the best. So it's okay if that happens. It's not a big deal. Um, you know, that's just part of the project. Okay, give me one more moment here. Uh-oh. My camera doesn't want to work. Hang on one second, guys. So yeah, you basically draw, you know, your face first or your hand first, and then you do the opposite. That's how you would do it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out really quickly and see if I can connect my camera real quick. And then if I can't, then we're just not going to see my materials today. So give me one second, guys, okay?
Okay, let me see if I can do my webcam. Work. No. Sorry, give me guys. Sorry, guys. Give me one more second here. <laughs> uh, you do not have to color your blind contour. No. Okay, I'm going to give this one more try. Sorry, guys. Give me one more second. I guess I cannot use my camera. Oh, it makes me sad. Oh, well, all right. Well, either way, um, next time, you know, I'll, I'll definitely show you guys my materials that I use, um, or that you can use or play around with or whichever. All right, so we're gonna be talking about negative space. So basically with negative space, it is a type of fundamental art because you're dealing with space in general. You may have seen uh, the images that you see here, which is the symmetrical uh, vessel that looks like a face. It's like, it basically you call it a face vase. Um, so these type of drawings or paintings are fun to look at because in one picture you can see a vase right in another picture you can see the actual face and it's very symmetrical if we folded any of these pictures down the center um, it would be equal on both sides so um Basically, the area around the object, this black part on this one here, the white space on this one, and then the black space on this one, are all showing the negative space. The negative space is what's around the object, whereas the positive space would be the object itself. So why is negative space important? It's important because of compositional balance. It gives us the symmetrical balance that the picture needs. If we had the vase off to the left or off to the right, it wouldn't feel as balanced and we may not even recognize it that it's a face. Okay. So by removing the elements of an, of an image, it can invoke mystery as well as conjure emotions um, as well, especially if we just focus on the negative space. So can negative space help you with drawing? Yes, it can. Um, it helps you kind of see what is around the object as well as how the object would be shaped. So negative space traces the outline, the absolute outer edge of the object, whatever that object may be. 
So I want you to take a look at two different artists here. This is Sarah Barnes with her drawing of a planter. And then we have Andrea Dezo who did this uh, princess and frog um, themed positive and negative space. This is actually out of, um, I believe this is out of paper. She uh, hand carved all of this or hand cut it out. So here you can see um, with Sarah Barnes how the negative space is especially between the leaves so our eye is already kind of optically blending it sort of so we can see those images so let me zoom in here and show you guys what I mean here so you can see like where the space is between each leaf how the leaf is being bent um, perhaps maybe even just by your eye optically connecting the lines that you can see the bends and twists of each leaf just by seeing the background being colored only. So it's interesting to see for sure. And then with the princess and the frog one here, you can even see how the top part would be actually the positive space, right? With the black colored, but then on the bottom, the black is actually the negative space. So it changes, and this is where that change line would be. If we asked what the negative space color would be for the top part, it would be the white. And then you can see how the white ends up becoming the positive space down below. So it's interesting to see how it works, um, you know, in, in art piece for sure. You can think of the same thing kind of like a, uh, uh, like a checkerboard pattern. Um, you could also think of it that way where one checkerboard is white and the other one's black and it alternates. It's alternating the positive and negative space of the board. So we're gonna be using negative space for hand drawings. So in order to understand how to draw the hand, you need to understand the anatomy of the hand. So the book that I have used for most of my anatomy drawings or portraitures or anything like that, and I'm gonna type it in the chat, is Atlas of Human Anatomy for the Artist. And it is by Stephen Rogers uh, Peck. So if you're ever interested in looking at anatomy, um, learning how to draw it, anything like that, this particular textbook um, is one that I have used um, and I think it's probably the best. You can actually see some of the images here. Um, these are pictures of the book itself. So we're gonna kind of learn about the anatomy. I'm not sitting here saying we need to know every single word and what bones and everything, but I want you to get the understanding of it. So with the hand, not only does it include the palm of your hand and the fingers, but it also includes part of the wrist, okay? So the wrist, hand and wrist form the term, terminus of the upper extremity of your arm. In length, it is about maybe two thirds of a forearm. Um, and somewhat less than one head length. If you think of the head lengths, usually a typical body is about maybe seven head lengths, six and a half, seven, somewhere around there. Um, with your forearm, if you look at your hand, some of you may be small, so it's okay if it's not quite the same distance, but it would be almost your full arm or close to it, like your, uh, your forearm. Um, the skeleton of the wrist actually consists of eight irregular carpal bones. Um, if you've ever heard of carpal um, or carpal tunnel, that's basically dealing with the wrist and the bones. There are five slender metacarpals embedded into the palm of the hand and four phalanges, which are basically the knuckle bones, and they form the independent parts of the fingers. So we're going to take a look at the anatomy here and kind of zoom it in. So here in this zoom in, um, you can see where it says carpal bones and it's pointing to the top. It's literally these bones. This would be the carpal bones. And really this sits right where your wrist is and how it connects to your arm. These fingers right here are basically your palm. This is where your palm is.
Oh, you can't see it when we zoom in? Oh. Okay. Well, zoom in to, um, sorry. Uh, if you guys can adjust your, your presentation page here and zoom in to the top, uh, top left hand. That's the one that I'm looking at. I apologize. I thought everybody could see it. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, if you're all zoomed in, go ahead and just give me a green check mark to let me know. Okay. Perfect. Um, so again, the top part of the wrist is, uh, or the top part of this hand anatomy is your wrist. That's the carpal bones. Um, the next part down, these kind of long metacarpals, as they call it, they call it meta because it's in the middle and carpal because it does connect to the carpal bones. So these consist of your palm. This is what your palm's made out of. If you guys have any of you ever hold, held like a really strong flashlight to your hand um, and you can kind of see like the shadows of the bones underneath. Have any of you ever done that before? No? Nobody's done that? Yes? It is. It's really neat. It's really neat to kind of see because if, if you do it if you have a strong enough light and it's dark enough, you can actually see your bones in there. Along with like maybe some veins and everything like that. So it's kind of creepy, but it's also cool. <laughs> so basically, these are your metacarpals. This is your palm. Oh, Aislinn, I was just asking if you've ever taken like a, a flashlight and held it against the palm of your hand and you look at the backside of your hand and if you can see like a shadow of your bone sticking or anything like that. I don't know. I used to do it all the time. That's why I ask when I was little. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, like I said, sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. And you just have to get it at just the right angle and have a strong enough flashlight. But basically, that's what your metacarpals are. That's that's your that's the palm of your hand. So then, at that point, you can see the bottom of the metacarpals are actually where your knuckles are. And then the next three lines in each of the phalanges uh, will be your fingers. And the thumb is considered one... Then this is two, three, four, and five. So the top left picture is actually the top part of your hand. This is the way the bones would look if your hand was to your side and you were looking at the top part. The one slightly below, if you just scroll down slightly, um, is the bottom part of your hand. So you should be able to notice just from the shading of the bones how it kind of feels like it's kind of bending inward a little bit. They're not so much making like a cup out of their hand, but it does feel like the bottom part. So you can kind of see how the bones look from both the top view and the bottom view. Again, carpals, metacarpals, and then the phalanges. Okay, go ahead and zoom out of that. And then we're going to take a look at hand drawing specifically with the fingers and the thumb. So the special length of the middle finger of your hand, no matter which hand you're looking at, is attributed to be relatively longer than any of your other fingers. 
The index finger and the ring finger tend to be about the same. Some may be falling short of the middle finger. Some may be close to the length. It just kind of depends. It, everyone's hand is different. But typically, your, your first uh, index finger and your ring finger tend to be about the same length. I was going to show you mine because on my left hand, my index finger is actually much shorter than my ring finger. And on my right hand, it's just slightly longer than my left, but it's still about the same. And then in length again, the little finger, um, which is your last finger, um, <clears throat> will fall short of its neighbor by one full segment. So when you look at your hand and you notice your ring finger, the segment that I'm talking about is like this tiny little piece. Like this would be one segment, this is number two, this is number three. So if you hold your hand straight, kind of like you're doing like a Buddhist palm kind of hand gesture, um, you can actually see that your pinky more than likely is falling about at that point um, for that first segment. And this helps you, especially when you're measuring and when you're drawing hands. If you know this, you know, this this kind of, uh, not so much of a formula, because again, like I said, everybody's hands are different. Some people have very similar length in fingers. Some people have longer fingers than their hand. Um, you know, hand sizes always change. So, um, but this is the relative formula that you can use to get used to drawing your hand. Now, the last part is the thumb. So the head of the thumb, metacarpal may be seen as a mobile apex. So for instance, not only is it part of your palm, but if you guys look at your hand and move your thumb up and down, that part of your palm is actually moving because that's part of the bone. So it's really this part right here that's moving, has muscle on it, and it's connected to this, which would be the rest of your palm. So it tends to almost be like an isosceles triangle, if you ever think about it, how it is uh, to the base of your carpal root, which will connect to your wrist. So it's kind of interesting to see. And then of course, with your thumb, instead of having three joints or three um, phalanges, your thumb actually would have two. Your thumb has like a smaller piece and then a single piece. So that's the only difference between the thumb. Every other finger has three metacarpals, um, or not metacarpals, phalanges, I'm sorry. But the thumb has two. And here you can see, for instance, how these bones to your forearm, you have two bones in your forearm, connect and rest with the wrist. And how the wrist is the bottom of the hand and then these are the bottom of the fingers. So you guys can kind of see how that all kind of connects. So negative space hand drawing. How would you draw hands and what's the best way to go about it? So this is the part where I would have turned my camera on to show you guys and draw, but instead we're gonna look at the whiteboard. So I'm going to kind of show you guys how to draw the hand in uh, respect of how I learned how to draw it, okay? So typically when you have your hand, um, it tends to have, you know, like a wrist of some kind that'll bow out, right? Usually what I do is I have a centerpiece and a circle and this indicates the wrist, okay? Okay. Now, if I'm doing my right hand, I'm gonna have my thumb come out to my side. So the next thing is that since this is gonna be part of the wrist, I'm gonna have the, the metacarpals be like a fan. So it's almost like that with the wrist and then the bones of the arm. And then with this, I would have lines coming up indicating the metacarpals. So this hand's gonna be actually rather big when we look at it. Now with the thumb, since it has two, 
I just draw two more. And this would be your phalanges. With this, it would be three with a small circle for each joint. And they get smaller as they go. Since that line was a little long. Yeah, that's about how I want it. And then what I do after that is I just do the skin basically around it. You pretend like you have the muscle on there and then you build it from there. So then maybe I would refine my hand. It's a lot harder with a mouse, that's for sure. Maybe I'll make my, you know, palm be a little bit thicker here. And then that would basically be the hand. So I know this is really rough. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> But just to kind of show you what the, oops. Let me go back one. Oh, well, I guess it's not going to work. <laughs> and I zoomed in on accident. Sorry, guys. But yeah, so you can kind of see how the structure of the hand would be. Just from that outline. And the best way to learn is just to keep doing it over and over and over again. You guys have sort of studied your hands a little bit uh, with the blind contour. So you're basically doing the same thing, but this time, instead of just staring at your hand while you draw, you can stare at your hand and look at your paper as you draw, okay? So now that you kind of have this foundation down, drawing your hand would be a little bit simpler. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize the whiteboard just for a moment and take us back in to the PowerPoint. So in here, if you wanted to zoom in on either of these images, you can. Um, this is definitely something that I would encourage you guys to kind of look at and see how this artist was uh, kind of explaining and looking at the size of the hand, how they draw the hand. They have the ratios, I think, on the arm here just to show you. Um, the joints where the, the metacarpals and where they connect to the hand, how the um, bones look, how the hand would look, go looking down, if it was straight out, if it was together, bent slightly. So you can kind of see how the artist kind of put it together. Same with this side over here. It's the same kind of thing, but it's dealing with the finger aspect. So here are the finger bone ratios. It's three to two. So you tend to have like a big one, two medium sized ones and then a small one. So you can see here on this side, it's dealing with the metacarpal to the fingers. 
But if you think of it on this side, it's the metacarpal to the two on the thumb. And you can see this uh, uh, side image of how the fingers would fit with the bones and how it would bend. Originally, I wasn't really thinking about it, but if you guys really like the idea of doing anatomy, we could move towards learning anatomy more so than just the fundamentals. I mean, we could still do it. I was going to have you guys draw or paint your favorite candy at some point in the next week or two as well. So that was going to be like our next step. So maybe next week we'll kind of learn a little bit more of anatomy while we incorporate something new in. And then the following week, which I think it was going to be the candy drawing, um, you could do candy or anatomy at that point. So I'll, I'll probably continue with the anatomy. <laughs> I know the feeling. It's hard. Portraiture is very difficult. But does anybody have any questions on the hand? Like I said, originally, this was not going to be the plan of drawing with the whiteboard. Um, like I said, I was going to show you guys. I had it all set up, and then now my camera's not working. So, um, But I hope you kind of get the gist of it just by this drawing here. Um, one thing I can do, if you guys want to see kind of like a zoomed-in version of, an, of a finger, is that something that you guys are interested in seeing, just to kind of see how it's drawn out? Cheyenne's, Cheyenne's like, yes, please. Peyton, Zara, Aislin. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to kind of, um, if I zoom in on the whiteboard, can you guys see it or do you have to zoom in too? Now that I'm asking the question. <laughs> you have to do it? Okay, um, let me just go ahead and erase this. You guys okay with this picture? How we went through it? Do you want me to leave it up or you guys okay with it? Cheyenne's good with it. Aislinn, Peyton, Rhiannon, Zara, are you guys okay with me deleting this? Okay, perfect. All right, so the fingers. So I have my hand in a position in front of me, and it is sort of like in a bent kind of claw, like it's reaching out kind of position. All right, so I'm going to do just a quick outline sketch of the direction of my hand. I'm sure once you guys kind of see it, it may make sense on the direction of my hand. So here you can kind of see the shape of my hand. So this is my palm, right? This is my wrist. And then really this should be more like, eh. It should be a little bit skinnier, but this is my arm. This is the arm here. So can you guys kind of already see how my hand is sort of formed at this point just by the lines itself? So in order to draw the bones, so you know, for instance, just by the look of this position that your carpal bones 
you know, are somewhere in here, right? And then you have the metacarpals. Okay. Now the next part is the joints of it. So here I have a bone that kind of comes up like this. If you saw how that artist kind of had like almost like a, uh, well, not, not that. It's not what I was trying for. They almost had like almost like a wishbone, maybe like a uh, corkscrew, something like that. Uh, kind of shape like a bean shape with that's wider on each end so it kind of falls like that a little bit and really this bone almost like a square kind of goes out like that and then my index finger is like that so then when I draw it this is going to be my first knuckle I'd probably want to get a little bit closer to the bone. My fingers are not this this fat, but <laughs> you'd probably want to get a little bit closer, maybe about like that close. And then maybe like that. So that may be a little too a little too extreme. And then there is some lines here because my finger is kind of protruding towards me. So I am drawing those folds that you guys have with your fingers. And then even the, the fingernail. So then, oops. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry guys, hang on one second. Oh, oh well. I was gonna erase the bones, but anyway. So you can kind of see how it's supposed to be. And I feel like my finger kind of ends here and wraps itself around. And then this part of my hand and thumb kind of split off into here. And then I actually have a line with my lifeline coming down here. However, I feel like my thumb is too short. So to change the position of the thumb, I'm going to erase the lines that I had here originally. And maybe even the metacarpal just a little bit. So you can see how it's adjusting. Erasing. All of that. So then with this one, again, it's going to have that joint. You can do a circle. You can do this shape, whatever you want to do. And then this one ends up being a little bit shorter originally. And then another small joint. And then my finger joint. So this is actually going to kind of come out here. And I'm actually going to wrap it around. So it's going to be kind of like that. There might be a little bit of a bend here. A little bit of a bend here. And then my nail would be like that. And then I have a couple lines here, right? So then if I take my pen or my brush, you guys can kind of see the outline a little bit better. So, oops.
I know. I'm 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 having fun with this. I wish I had my tablet. My tablet would make this probably a lot easier. But, you know. I don't always have everything. So hopefully you can kind of see how I built my thumb, right? And it, it is, it does take a little bit of time. It really does. So then the rest of my hand, based off of that, kind of comes up almost like this. So my lifeline was a little bit further down. So I ended up not having it. Not having it in the right spot. So again, my lifeline would probably be right here. And then this is the last part of my palm, basically. So then from here, that means that these would actually be a lot longer. I just made them shorter. They should be a lot longer, basically. So from here, you would do the same thing. So bone, phalange part one, part two, and then part three. So then this would just outline what you see. So this is my pinky. That is number five in Roman numeral, or five. And then you would just have the other fingers be exactly the same. You would just outline it, try to figure out where the joint is, and then build it from there. So this one would go up. I feel like my fingers are getting fatter. <laughs> and then this one's actually covered with my middle finger. So here's that joint, there's the joint, and there's the end piece. So this would be kind of like that. Oh, we're in the um, whiteboard. In the group whiteboard. So that's how you would draw your hand. The best way to do the project that I want you guys to do is you're going to draw the hand kind of like this, but instead of having the lines and the bones and everything, you would erase it all. All this would be erased except for the outline. And that's what I want to direct you guys to next. Okay, so I'll bring this whiteboard back up um, and I'll leave it up for the end, but I want to cover with you guys what I'm talking about. So... This is going to be the assignment. This is a drawing that I did on the left side of the presentations. Hopefully you guys can see it here. Um, as you can see, I only did the negative space. I erased my lines when I created this. I did only a little bit of the outline that I wanted to. So I may not have needed this line or this line or this line really, but I did all the negative space and that was my hand. What I want you guys to do is over the next few weeks, as you practice, I want you to do this assignment. I would like for you to upload whichever one you 
want to upload, but I want you to do two negative space drawings of your hand. One can be just holding an object if you want. It can be by itself. You can do a shadow puppet if you've ever seen those. Um, anything like that. Now for erasing, when you do this, the way I draw is I actually draw very lightly on the paper. Enough where it's a, it's a small sketch. I'm not pressing on it. I'm not making a dark line or anything like that. That way when I do erase it, and I erase it with a plastic eraser, um, when I do erase it, it doesn't really leave a mark behind. Now with this picture, you can't really see it, but there are some marks on here that you can't really see on this one. But when you look at it, like in, in real life, you'll actually be able to see some of the lines. But that's how I went about it. I drew very lightly. Um, plastic erasers work, kneaded erasers. Okay, so here's, here's the difference between the erasers. If you guys have ever played around with either one. Plastic erasers are great, but they tend to tear the paper a little bit. Have any of you ever tried to erase something and all of a sudden the paper, the paper starts to tear? Maybe you're pressing down a little too hard or maybe you're just erasing and the paper just starts to rip. Plastic erasers tend to do that. With kneaded erasers, which are like these putty erasers, the best way to clean them is by stretching them out kind of like putty and then, you know, layering it. Um, that particular type of eraser is more inclined to pick up the graphite without destroying the paper. So if you are working on very thin paper and you don't want to press down too hard with a plastic eraser, then you'll want to get a kneaded eraser. Otherwise, if you're you know, working with relatively thick paper, a plastic eraser should be fine. Yeah, the nice thing about kneaded erasers too is that it can also help with um, creating highlights in graphite or in charcoal um, drawings or anything like that. If you guys ever get a chance to look at my website, I think I send it via email. Um, some of those drawings um, that are the still life drawings, a lot of those white areas I used with a kneaded eraser. That's how I got them. And then I just kind of enhanced it with a white uh, pastel pencil or white charcoal pencil. But that's how you can kind of, kneaded erasers are like that. They're, they're very malleable. I love using them. Um, but for something like this, like when you're drawing your hand and you just want to have the, the outline of your hand, and especially if you don't press really hard on the paper, um, you know, a plastic eraser is, is fine. Um, that's all you need, really. Okay, so at this point, you guys know what the assignment is. I want you to create two negative space drawings of your hand doing whatever. Try not to trace your hand, but draw your hand uh, and make sure the background is relatively colored. You can do this in anything. You can do this in graphite, pen. You could do color pencil, watercolor. Um, if you have any acrylics, you could do that. Um, if you have markers, you could use markers, um, whatever you want to do. But I want to at least see one of the two drawings, um, if you can, by next class. Does anybody have any questions on the assignment aspect of it? Yes. Okay. What is your question? Yes, so you only have to submit one of them. So Aislinn, I have it under the presentation pane um, or panel for a jigsaw. Um, it's basically creating two negative space drawings of your hand. So if you're looking at that presentation, you'll see my hand here. The negative space is all I really wanna look at. I wanna make sure that you are coloring the negative space. And then the, the positive space, which is your hand, is going to be just a solid white. So you're going to be working on the outline only of your hand. Now, like I said, you can draw the way we were just practicing with our sketch of our own hand with drawing the bone structure or the lines to kind of give you that bone structure and then drawing your hand around it. 
But I want you to do is I want you to erase that when you're done and then only do only color the negative space, which is the outside of your hand. So the space around your hand. Does that make sense? Okay, perfect. Any other questions about the assignment? Are we okay? Okay, perfect. So I'm going to go back to the whiteboard here. Um, does anybody want to see another sample of laying out the hand, drawing the bone structure, anything like that? Uh, yeah, I can actually do that if that's what you want to do um, for sign language. Do you want to see the bottom part of the hand or the top part of the hand? Usually it's the bottom part that's being shown, but I don't know if you want to see what the back, you know, the, the top part of the hand looks like versus the bottom. Okay. So that's a great question. Um, have, have any of you, you guys may have seen something slimmer. There is an artist um, that I do follow that does watercolor. Um, paintings of hands in the American Sign Language format. It's really interesting to look at. Um, so that's definitely something that we could do here. Uh, before I delete this, anybody have any other questions about this particular drawing? Aislin, Payton, Rhiannon, Zara, you guys are okay? Okay. All right. So I have this, uh, the I love you symbol, which is basically like a, um, if you've ever seen the rocker symbol, except move your thumb out. That's, that's basically the I love you symbol with your hand. So it kind of looks like if your hand's like this, this is a pretty rough drawing. <laughs> so it looks like that, right? And then you have your two fingers like that. So it's kind of like that rocker symbol, right? Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to kind of look at the shape, look at how your hand is positioned, look if it's scrunched down. If you have a lot of scrunch, maybe the side of your hand isn't fully straight. Maybe it protrudes out slightly. So take a look at where your hand folds, where your fingers are, and what the bends are. And this is how you're going to start. So first and foremost, you know the wrist part, the carpals, um, bones are going to be at the bottom. So you'll just go ahead and just start drawing, you know, roughly what it may look like. Doesn't need to be much of anything. So we're going to say that this is the wrist part. And then your arm bones go like this. Okay. So then with the hand, this is where you're going to start with the metacarpals, right? Because that's the centerpiece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw lines for where the metacarpals should be. And maybe they need to be elongated. Probably just a little bit. Now what you can do is at this point with those lines, this is where you can draw those metacarpals. I'm not going to do it for the sake of time, but this is the point where you're like, okay, so where these lines are would be where those metacarpal bones are. So I'm going to draw small rectangles um, that resemble that, okay? Then you're going to draw the little joints, right, where your knuckle bones would normally be. 
And then with the thumb, we have one bone that goes up here and then another one that kind of bends out for me. For this one, it's kind of short, so it sort of looks like like this almost because it's protruding towards us. So there's that. And then my finger is going to be like an oval right here. And then it just kind of bends out and around. And then when you're building your finger, at least for me, that's what it's going to look like. So then with this one, it ends up being a pretty shallow, almost a very angle kind of rectangle box for your first metacarpal because then with the joint here, it ends up going down, right? And then you have your fingers kind of like that. It might be a little bigger, maybe this, you know, index finger is over slightly instead. So maybe if I select all of that and just moved it over a little, it would be kind of like that instead. It could be like that. You can have it really far away. Depends on how extreme you have it. But right now my fingers are kind of relaxed a little bit, so it's kind of aiming more towards me. And then with the pinky one, I'm just gonna move that pink, pinky line over because I feel like it's just a little too far for where it needs to be. And probably angled a little differently. And then again, this is gonna be kind of like a shape. So lots of angles, lots of, uh, if you wanna think of a perspective kind of thing, it's, it's really with this particular drawing, it's a lot like dealing with perspective. And then basically my finger comes down. I have that line that goes pretty much right in the center of my hand where it folds. And then I have my hand kind of bend down. Sometimes, depending on the uh, direction of your hand and the way it's looking, let me just go ahead and put that back there. Uh, sometimes you may see part of the top part of your hand, in which case with this you would just need to kind of just draw it out. And then of course with the finger, index finger, it kind of goes here to the line and then it ends up bending over and then there's my thumb. So you can see how I'm even, you know, adjusting as I draw. Don't be afraid to do that. You can adjust as you draw. Whatever works best for you. So hopefully this sort of looks like it. I feel like if I was doing it on paper, it'd probably look a little bit better, but. <laughs> Hopefully you guys followed along. You kind of saw how I made those adjustments. Um, as, as I'm sure you can't see, I had my hand in front of me. So I was looking back and forth between the computer and my hand. So feel free to do that. It was not a blind contour drawing of where my hand would be. Um, you know, definitely take your time with it. Make sure you follow the line, just like we learned with blind contour, how we took our time, even though we were drawing without looking. Um, Take that technique and apply it to this as well. Anybody have any questions at all?
Okay, so it is 7 o'clock, so if you do have to leave, feel free to go. However, if you guys have a webcam, I can open your webcam up, and you're more than welcome to show me what sketches you had so I can make some quick comments if you guys need it. So that it is something that you guys can do. At this time, if you guys want to leave, feel free to go. You guys are good. Have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, sure. Let me go ahead and give you webcam privileges. There you go. Uh, yeah, you can screen share. Let me go ahead and unlock the screen share. Okay, you should be able to screen share now. It's okay. Take your time. Um, Aislinn, do you have any questions or anything? Are you interested in sharing what you did? There is. So there's a couple different ways. Either, I don't know if you have a webcam, but there's always the webcam option. Um, the other one would be taking a picture and, you know, emailing it to yourself or whichever. So you can put it in the whiteboard or you can screen share. Those are really like the only two ways to share or only ways that I know work um, to share. So if you email it to yourself, you'll get an email um, and you'll be able to see an attachment. And then all you would have to do is just click on the attachment or download it to your computer. If you download it to your computer, um, you'll have to go to your files and click downloads. And then you should be able to just double click the image and it'll pop up. Otherwise, if you click on the attachment from your email, um, it should at least give like a sample um, or like an overview image, in which case we'll be able to share your screen um, if, that, if that is available. So that's something that you can do. Okay, go ahead, Cheyenne. I'm gonna make this big too, so I can see on my big screen. <laughs> Okay, so yours is on the right. So it looks like with the direction that you had the hand, um, it looks like that is probably the top view of your hand, right? Of what you were attempting to do. Okay, perfect. Can you go back to the image? All right, so from what we just learned today, I'm sure you're probably looking at that and you're probably like, I could probably do better than that. 
I hope that's how you feel because I, that's, that's how I want you to, to kind of see it as, cause we were kind of doing more of a realistic drawing. <laughs> so, I mean, that's not bad for, for not really knowing much about anatomy th that you have an understanding of what the hand really looks like. You know what I mean? Now with your new drawing, if you are going to be doing like American sign language or something, take a look, Google um, some American sign, like hand signs for American sign language. Really, those signs that you see, especially drawing wise, are actually people drawing it and take a look at it and see what the anatomy looks like. It's really interesting to look at. So that's what I encourage you to kind of do some research on if that's what you want to do. Yeah, so you can always take a look at your own hand and the positioning of it. That's always the best is to use your own hand, whether it's your left or your right. Take a picture of it if you want to see, um, as, or take a picture of, the, of your position so that way, you know, you're not, like, you know, stressing out your hand or anything like that or cramping. Um, so that way you can have the images in front of you too. Um, that's how I go about it all the time. Um, if you want to, but I did want to ask Aislinn, were you able to, to get that all set up? Are you ready to share or do you still need a minute? Okay, I'll give you another minute, um, and then I'll take a look at what Cheyenne has, and then I'll kind of walk you through it, okay? Okay, so portraiture, um, very Disney. I see how you're doing, like, the Elsa, the Elsa theme, which is not bad as well. I mean, this looks really good from either drawing as you saw it or whichever. So, okay. But yeah, the, again, you kind of have the understanding of the anatomy of it. It's just like you're, you're more familiar with the cartoon style rather than the realistic style, which is what we were kind of going for today. Um, yeah, and, and to be honest, I mean, a lot of the cartoon, if not every cartoon artist, artist really learns anatomy first before really turning it into that cartoony kind of style. Um, I can tell you for me, I looked at a lot of anime and manga drawings before I really learned the anatomy aspects. So when I do a lot of realistic drawings, sometimes the anime stuff kind of pops in and out a little bit. You can kind of see it too. Um... Okay, so dress designs. Very nice. I like the color. I like the choices of the color. You've got pretty much like a cool dress going on with Jasmine over here and a very warmish kind of mute um, color theory, color concept here with Elsa. And then I'm assuming the one on the far left is more of like an original design, something that you might even wear. Um, I would totally wear that. It's kind of reminds me of like a, a fun little like punk look that I used to wear in high school myself. So <laughs> dating me there. <laughs> but yeah, just keep practicing. Just keep going. I mean, like I said, with anatomy, um, you really just kind of have to, especially with anatomy, you kind of have to take it one section at a time and practice that section over and over and over again. If you don't have a model or have someone that's willing to sit there for, you know, whether you take pictures of it or sit there for a couple of hours while you draw, um, use yourself. It's always the best. A lot of like master artists use themselves all the time uh, as a reference when they were painting or drawing people. Yeah, so um, with fashion designing too, you also have to understand not only the anatomy, but how the fashion anatomy is different from realistic anatomy. 
a lot of the times when people create like fashion design drawings, uh, the female fi figure tends to be really skinny, very sleek, very smooth. Um, maybe some curves involved in there. Uh, the male anatomy is kind of more square. It's more blocky. You can kind of see the shapes in it. Um, whereas with the realistic versions of drawings, everybody's shape is different. Some people are round, some people are pear squares, some people are apples, you know, it's, it's all different shapes, but usually with fashion, they tend to kind of fit things in a certain order and a certain shape, really. Yeah, the ideal fashion shape, basically. Mm -hmm. But don't let that deter you from creating beautiful clothes and other fashion accessories. <laughs> no problem. All right, so I'm going to bounce back to Aislinn. Aislinn, were you able to email it to yourself? Okay. So I'm going to give you screen share privileges and I'll walk you through this. So go ahead and share your screen. Uh, Cheyenne, if you don't want to stick around, feel free to leave. <laughs> 